on, baby. flying down and see if they can find any bait fish. But some of them, some of them are just waiting around because they are also betting that it's going to be here too. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're betting, we're betting that they're going to be here too. So I'm happy to see that there's birds waiting here. Taking the same bed. They're just waiting around there. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we should go down and try. <clears throat> birds are finally up and wake. Take the truck down try there for about an hour if nothing we're heading down south with all the other birds different kinds of rigs all bottom rigs um, and I'm hoping to catch some fish on all of them look at my bait guys this is our new neon pink shrimpy bits look at them oh my goodness so much color and they're also like they're infused with color down to the core look the whole thing is neon pink so I'm gonna bring some of that bait down with me maybe I'll just bring the whole box that's why I like these waterproof bait boxes. And here's the orange colored ones. Oh, dang, look at those. I'll bring a couple of pre-tied rigs down there too. You see? These are our hay skipper catch-all rigs here. This is all beat up, but I mean, this is an <laughs> old one. But I, I always keep some pre-tied rigs on me just in case, like, see, I tie these up more here these are glow in the dark but I'm gonna try just bringing these two down for now in my pocket all right let's go down and I keep my bait in a separate cooler here since I'm I've been camping here I keep all my bait in one separate cooler so it doesn't touch my food doesn't touch all my other stuff and I keep it closed I take one piece of bait out put on the board and you basically want to keep the ice in here as cold as you can so that means having a separate dedicated bait cooler and only using as much as you need when you need it okay so let's take a look all right here's some blue fish that i caught yesterday i might want to use that for bait but really that nice chunk looks good put out a blue fish. Ooh, big mullet okay here's the first bottom ring i got called a fish finder rig and the fish finder rig has a sliding sinker right here you see this this part you attach your sinker to it and this thing will slide back and forth so if a big fish takes this the big fish takes that off go starts leaving with it it won't be suspicious because they won't feel the the, the weight of the sinker it'll take it and then you'll see it on your line, then you set the hook. So, it has a sliding sinker right here, which is just a snap swivel, to a 200 pound, to a 200 pound swivel right here, a 100 pound leader line, and then a circle hook. And I, I picked a really thick one, so nothing can bite through it or bend it out of shape. Now, the benefit of this rig is that it can cast really far because it's so compact. Look at how the sinker is right next to the bait. Sometimes there's a, there's a fish finder rig with a lot longer of a leader line and it starts to helicopter the bait as you cast it. 
This keeps the leader line short and it'll allow, allow you to cast it really far. Bomb that out there. So this rig is called a mortician's rig. Let me show you how it works. See, I like to use a mortician rig because when this gets bitten off by a bluefish or if it gets bitten off by a bluefish or a toothy fish, you can just change out this leader line with another snood. But you can keep tying these up and just reattaching it to this main line. Um, and it freely spins on here without getting tangled up an interesting rig look at that now I'm putting a three ounce sinker on this a pyramid sinker see that oh, Brendan. I'm okay the hooks are sharp that's for sure all right time to cut some bait and these are some big fat mullet all right let's just start with that I'll start with two small pieces like this Look at that presentation. Now this one didn't go so far. This one went a lot further. I went far, this one's close, and here's my last one, which is a, a far shot too. Here's my conventional reel. This I got last, I got last season right after I came to North Carolina and saw everyone was throwing heavers, and I've been practicing it the entire like, winter and spring season and summer. Like, I, the reason I got this is so I can use it in North Carolina. I like, I like this kind of style and I want to catch a big fish on it. I want to see what that feels like to catch it on a, on a conventional reel rather than a spinning. So what I've got on here is another high-low rig, except this is tied with 50 pound leader line here. So I can hook a big fish, no problem. So with this rig, 50 pound is pretty heavy. This hook is triple size, triple thickness hook, so that um, it's it's heavy enough to land a big fish. It's thick enough to land a big fish without bending it out, and uh, it's 50 pound leader, so that it's just for bigger bigger fish, it's okay. How does it feel? It feels like a small fish. It could be a uh, whiting. It could be a bluefish. Either way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably use it for bait. Mm. It's a, a sea, sea robin. robin. Oh no. What? I didn't know there were sea robins here. Well, I can't use it for bait. I don't know, I'm, I'm inclined to not use that for bait. I would not. I don't Whoa. know, actually, do you think- Look at that fish, it? look at that. Thing is huge. I mean, look at that wing right there. It's the just such a unique underneath. looking. All righty, here's a game plan. We're debating between moving down or staying here. We see a lot of little tiny fish in the surf, so Brendan is gonna put on his waders, try to cast at them, see if we can get any, and see if the fish will prefer that over anything that we're throwing. Yes. Bullet, Lord, bullet. Minnow, mullet, glass minnows too. I hear you can fry these glass minnows up too. They, this is the ones that Cassidy and Mark were saying about. Oh, wow. These are the ones you just fry up whole. These are like smelt looking fish. Yeah, they do look like smelt. Oh, Carolina we got. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the big ones we have here. Small ones here. What are you doing? Putting it on a Carolina rig. A little tiny one. Yeah, one like this. He's switching things up. All right, we got live bait now. Oh my 
How big does it feel? I mean, enough to feel my drag everywhere. Do a speed. I gotta check the species one more time. Make sure. Oh Look. my gosh. Maybe I'm wrong. There, that's it. Oh, oh my god, it's beautiful. Look at that. Oh. Come on, look, look at the green. Hold thing. it in the sun. Turn it. Wow. The other way. Oh Turn god. it the other way. There you go. It is beautiful. It was really strong. <laughs> you can see the the line, how it cut into its face here. Beautiful fish. Oh. That's what's jumping out of the water, isn't it? Yes. We gotta put a Carolina rig on it. Can we eat this? I'll check. And it falls out of the core, by the way. False Albie. Not an albacore tuna. A false Albie. Pardon me. Oh, it's a live You're right. You caught that on the live bait? Not live bait. You caught that on the mullet you caught? Huh? You caught that on the mullet? Yeah. Well, the thing is, we were trying the cut bait the whole time. It's not until we put the live bait on and the big school of them came through, we were ready. So you need to have live bait. I mean, just goes to show live bait will always catch you some big fish. So I, I know a lot of people say that these false albacore are no good to eat. Um, but after I caught it, it was pretty much out of life. So it ended up dying. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and fix it up and eat it right now. I think I can make it really good personally because it's so fresh. I'm gonna, I bled it out already and it's actually ready to eat right now. But look at how thick he is. That's my fist. That's a meaty fish. Okay. Should I, you wanna do steak style? No, just fillet it. Fillet it? I hope we got some good dinner. Yeah. yeah. People say that this is nasty fish, but I think people don't know how to cook. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's just a bunch of bones because so far it's kind of bloody so far. I'll try anything once, right? I'll try anything once. That's my motto. It's freaking strong. It's like all muscle here. Yeah. Do you think the meat will be tough? I literally have no idea. I didn't even know I could catch one of these here. Half of a fillet right here. You see that? Looks a lot better than like I mean, look at this. This is like dark, dark red meat. It looks just like straight up blood. But that looks like some edible meat. That looks okay. I'm gonna do the other side and then uh, let's get them cooking. But we're gonna save this part here for bait. Every part of this fish is gonna be used. What'd you get? A big blue, well, medium sized blue. Huh? Well, it's all filleted up. I'm getting hungry. I'm ready to cook this up, get back to camp, which is like a hundred steps that way. The fish, they like came in one second and left in one second. I fought the fish, and by the time I, I landed it and whatnot, the fish were all the way down there. My dad got a blue fish, we cut that up too. We're gonna put that into the, the meal as well. It's kind of a weird morning. It was kind of a weird morning. I saw a lot of bait fish, but not a whole lot of bait. And when they did come through, I got only one of them. And they were gone right after that. Maybe I should have chased them down a little bit. 
I'm really, really stoked. That's the first time I ever caught a false Albi. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people let them go, but I really, really want to give it a try and see if it tastes any good. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm out here camping. I don't really have uh, too much food to eat. I, I, I'm relying on the fish that I catch here. So this is going to make a really great lunch. We are relying on the ocean to provide some food for us. So therefore, every little fish count. Except Thank for you. sea robin. I caught our sea robin. I didn't we want can that eat one. that too. You really wanted it, but I guess we... Um, I really didn't want that one. Yeah. It looks like a butterfly mixed with spider. <laughs> hey, hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we got a good meal tonight. Well, the last two nights we're having tofu for dinner, so... <laughs> I'm so ready for some plus. meat. This yeah. We haven't had meat for a couple of days now. Survival day two. Okay, so join us back at camp. Okay guys, it's a little bit later in the day. Welcome to Camp Skipper. I've actually filleted out a little piece of the um, false albacore tuna here, and it looks a lot like tuna. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna eat this sashimi style, which is literally just raw like this. Now look, I, I took a while to actually uh, clean and take all the bloodline and all of the, the stuff that you don't wanna eat off of this fish. So this is gonna be a really nice, cut of meat right here i'm looking forward to seeing what it tastes like raw japanese people they'll eat any kind of fish that comes out of the ocean they'll eat it raw um and i would like to give it a try too so let's let's get cutting yeah so in japan they'll eat whatever fish that comes out of the ocean as long as it comes out of the salt water it's good to eat and this is very very clean water there's no parasites in here there's no worms in here and i literally just caught this so this thing was alive not that long ago this is the freshest you can get it. So I'm gonna slice some of this up. And let's try it. Wow, that looks nice. It looks like tuna, doesn't it? Wow, that looks beautiful. Wow, that's a great cut. Looks like it has some good fat on the outside too. And if it's not amazing, I'll cook it in a noodle soup. So now I've got Japanese horseradish here, which is called wasabi. And I'm gonna mix that with some soy sauce, dip this in, and we're gonna have a little snack. So this, this fish, I literally caught right there. <laughs> like not that long ago. It was alive and healthy two seconds ago. And now we're about to eat it. It's going to be so fresh. I really, I'm having high hopes here. But a lot of people say this is not very good. Look at that. Oh, my oh wow. So That's a nice sunset. Beautiful. We're so lucky to be here. All right, ready? You go first. All right, I'll go first. It looks nice though, right? It looks, it looks like okay. tuna. Initial impressions. What is, looks, how does it look? Looks great. Looks great. Is it smell saying? No. Okay, all right. It's fresh. Okay, I'll eat it first. I'll eat it first. I'll try the small piece right here. Look at look at the marbling on that. Yeah. It's gotta be good. Wow, that's gotta be good. I have high hopes. I have very high hopes here, okay. Wow. It's like tuna. Okay, I'm gonna try and then I'll No, it's like it's really good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! I trust him. Not that I don't trust you. <laughs> but um, he's not fish either, so if he says it's good, then it's probably really good. Mm. Oh my gosh, like wow. I did not know that it was that wow. I actually think delicious. This is, actually, I think this is better than tuna because I'm, I'm not a tuna person. Well, oh. because you haven't had really, really fresh tuna like this before, have I mean, you? This is um, a little bit fatty. Chewy. All right, Aaron, here you go. <laughs> How is that? It's really good, right? I'm actually really surprised. I'm really surprised too. I thought it would be really bloody and disgusting, but... Mm. How would you describe the texture? 
just like melt in your mouth. Really tasty, like, it tastes a lot like the raw tuna that I'm used to when I get sushi. Mm -hmm. But this is way fresher than anything I've ever had. Wow. I would I would eat an albi again. I would eat it again. So, people who say that it's a junk fish, I disagree. I, I and maybe you people don't like wouldn't even dare try something like this. But if you can open your mind up a little bit and have a little bit more of an open mind, you will really open your world up to a lot, a lot of really awesome things that you never knew, you never knew could be so good. And that's kind of my attitude I have with with life and with just everything because there's a there's a whole world of things to to enjoy if you keep a closed mind it's a lot less you can enjoy so if you want to give this a try i i recommend you try it with an open mind make sure it comes out from the ocean and it's an ocean that's not polluted it's a really clean ocean but eat at your own risk there are like things that could bad things that could happen right so eat it at your own risk I, I harvest where I harvest from I am confident that I'm gonna be okay but there's still a, there's still a little bit of a risk I think it's a lot more minimal because I literally just caught this right there and I know that this is very clean water uh, but yeah thank you guys for watching that was a really awesome time I'm so happy you guys can join us um, we have such a great time camping out here and we want to share with you guys our adventures we want to share with you guys how we catch fish um, and maybe you can do the same kind of adventure here at Hey Skipper, we want to get you guys on fish and we want to make it easy for you to learn how to do so. Um, and we do this by filming videos just like this. We have also a lot of books that I write. I put it on my website, heyskipperfishing.com. Um, and also, you've seen it before, we've got a lot of these awesome baits that catch all sorts of different fish. If you want to try some of those, they're called salty bits. I've got squid, shrimp, clams, and now neon shrimp, which are really awesome. It's a really awesome way to support our channel. Uh, we don't take donations, but we do like to give you guys some products that we think are really going to help you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week.